Hello, Dizians of the Warp the Webway and YouTube. Welcome to a Shadespire video. Another one, I know. Uh, this video, I'll be reviewing some of the details on <clears throat> the essentially the Wood Elves for Shadespire. They're called uh, Yanari's Guardians, and I'm going to butcher the pronunciation thereof. But over the past few days, we've seen a couple of leaks about them. Uh, the picture you see right now is the current models. There are four of them. And the models themselves look very well done. I don't have close-ups. This is all the images I have at the moment. Um, in the next little bit, I'm going to cover a little bit about what I think they're going to be able to do. And uh, we'll see what happens. So the first card or model is going to be the leader, Yulthari. Um, he is a level 2 wizard. And this whole faction seems to be around uh, ranged abilities and not so much up close personal combat. Um, the inspiration condition is that they have either played a gambit, upgrade, action, or reaction that would remove a wound token from a fighter. Uh, that's going to be a little interesting to see the combinations of cards that bring that up. But this guy right here is probably going to be the linchpin because I know there are a number of spells that allow you to heal or remove damage tokens from a model. And this even says even if you don't remove those tokens, so you still have a use for that particular spell. Um, coming in at... Stand by. Coming in at a whopping 3 damage, 4 speed, and 2 dodge. Um, his inspired form has 5 speed, 2 dodge, and 3 damage. So they're in one-shot range of a lot of the melee factions, the orcs, the dwarves, uh, Steelheart's champions, you know, just about anybody that can pop out a three damage turn for one activation can one-shot these people. Um, but everything on their cards, the, the reactions after this fighter casts a spell with at least one crit, remove up to one wound token from this fighter. So that inspires him just by casting a spell. And while that isn't the same condition for everybody else, that is a pretty good reaction and a good way to try to get him inspired, which would make him far more powerful. Next up, we have uh, the Revenant Archer here. I'm not even going to try that first name. Um, range 3, needing hammers to hit, does 1 damage. Even when she's inspired, it's range 4, needing hammers to hit, and 1 damage. Uh, the biggest advantage to her being inspired is that it increases the range of your archer here but look at her reaction after this fighter's attack action takes an enemy fighter out of action make another attack action with this fighter you can you can only make this attack act this reaction once per round that is huge especially with the range that's in this faction already you can whittle down somebody to the point where you can maybe have two models there at one damage apiece and this is your last activation of those three models. Plink, plink, they're dead, and you move on. Uh, this is a great way to clear the board of some of those annoying one-hit wonder mo or one-wound models, especially if you're facing a horde such as Skaven or Skeletons. So, her being inspired uh, it is one of those where it's the same with the wound thing, but with the reactions and stuff that we'll go over here in a few minutes. I still think this is going to be a good, a good fighter, uh, a good finisher, if you will, for the entire faction. I don't think this is this is definitely not your upfront fighter, but this is certainly a someone who can finish up the round, take out one or two models, and hopefully uh, allow you to score some objectives by doing that. So next up we have Skahal. I'm sorry to all the people who speak Elvish. Um, at any rate, he's. Three hammers, two damage. He moves four, has a shield of one, and three damage, even while he's inspired. He does have cleave once he is inspired, however. Um, his ability that does an extra damage if there was a crit during the combat action is actually very good. It can give him potentially a three damage swing. What I see with this guy is this guy is going to be kind of there to back up your next model that I'm going to go over. He's here more of a annoyance. Um, helps clear out some of the chaff and also put some of that damage out maybe on one model that an, and our other beat stick comes in and does it to the next model. He is certainly not the tankiest thing in the world. At three damage, 
Like I said, a lot of these guys are going to be one-shotted, but he's not particularly bad. And last, we have the actual tank of the group. He has four damage, a range two attack, two hammers, and does two damage. Same inspires the rest of the group. His reaction is after an attack action, if there was any, if there's at least one crit in the defense roll for this fighter, this attacker suffer, the attacker suffers one damage, which is actually very nifty because you get those one damage models that have already been damaged or uh, they just have a damage point left on them. And this guy just kills them if he crits. If you're surrounded by three of them and he crits, then there you go. Um, but this is definitely the tank of the group. Uh, he has Withering Glaive. Uh, target all adjacent enemy fighters. Roll for each individually. It needs swords to hit. And it only does one damage, but at least that's something. Um, once he inspires, he gets the that particular Glaive. So I think this guy is going to be really good as your upfront model backed up by the rest of the unit. So you're going to want to invest some, some time and energy into making him a little bit better. All right, so on this particular set of cards, these are the cards that they have already previewed that come with this uh, faction box. You get two that do healing just by ploys, and that's an immediate two guys inspired because you don't have to actually remove the tokens of damage to inspire them. Uh, then you have your objective. If you at least three wounds were removed from the fighter cards and friendly in your preceding action phase, you get a glory point. This one I'm not so sold on because you have to. Act, this one says you have to remove the mod, the tokens. And if you're not wounded, then you're not going to be removing the tokens. So uh, I'm not sold on this one just yet, unless you want to go through a damaging hex and that sort of stuff. Uh, there's a lot of other ones. There's the healing potion you can throw in here as a generic card. I think there's a healing spell that is generic you can throw in that'll just help you get these guys inspired a little bit faster. The combinations are infinite. Once we once we see the combinations that that are the, the main cards that are going to be coming out, this will just allow us to to do this much better as far as uh, figuring out what cards to play with this particular group for objectives and ploys and upgrades. So finally, we've got the last of the previewed cards. And these are going to be two ploy cards and a gambit a spell card. This looks like this faction is going to work a little bit more on control just by their faction cards here. Uh, removing a die or have minus one dice to a minimum of one on the fighters uh, until the fighters out action. That's the curse of the dwindling. Uh, withering roots, they remove at minus two to a minimum of zero. And then, of course, Mesmerizing Gaze. I, I think a lot of these will... These are just a sampling of the cards that will be in the control area for this particular faction. Um, so on top of speed, you can reduce the opponent's speed and their ability to do damage to you through the use of these spells and the roots and then having a move token so they can't charge you. So that's my quick rundown of this particular faction and what they got going on. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. This faction releases this coming up Friday. If you desire it, please go ahead and pre-order it at your friendly local game shop, and we'll see you in the next video.